Hello again, welcome back to my channel. I've been meaning to start this series of videos for a while now, mainly focusing on how I go about painting specific objects that you might come across uh, the most when painting environments and uh, landscapes. Rocks are one of those things that can seem complicated when you're first starting out, but as I mentioned in literally every video I've ever made, um, if you simplify both process and the forms of everything, that'll be, uh, well, it will be way easier to understand. At this stage, I'm going to be using a brush with full opacity. Uh, I'll place the brush in the description so you can try it for yourself um, as well. I think the most important stage when painting rocks is getting the silhouette in first. The silhouette will help us communicate the kind of shape language the rocks will have whether they're rounded or they're square in shape, for example. Much like with character design too, if you can get the silhouette to read as an interesting, rocky shape, then you're already off to a great start. Look up reference for this stage to see what kind of rock shapes there actually are. It will be much, much easier than just trying to make something up from your head. I use the polygonal lasso tool to mask out a shape for this to keep the edges sharp and to keep the shape looking solid. You don't need to do the same, I just find this much easier when creating shapes. I've tried to create a set of shapes that also look asymmetrical, something I try to do often in my work, like all the time. I do this to create a nice counterbalance in the overall shapes. If they're all perfectly spaced out or were all the same size, it would look weird and it would look unnatural. This leads more into composition in general, so be sure to check out my previous video on the topic. Now we come to the interesting part of this process. Once we've got a shape that we're happy with, we can start building up the form within it. Make a new layer and attach it as a clipping mask to your rock silhouette by right-clicking on it in the layer panel and selecting Create Clipping Mask. This part of the process is where we start to paint in the darkest values or the darkest shadows into the rock to start making it look more 3D. As we've created a clipping mask, all of our painting will stay within the boundaries of the rock silhouette. Again, I'm just using a brush of full opacity for this, and I'm trying to use it to create broad strokes within the shape. We want to imagine that we're painting in the darkest sections of the rocks at this stage. All the crevices and all the cracks and all the shadows and all that kind of stuff. You can see by only using this one dark value, we can start to show the shape of the rocks purely based on where the light is hitting them. I'm trying to create the impression of form by placing brush strokes down and then chipping away at them with the eraser on full opacity as well. The whole process can be very trial and error, so don't be disheartened while you're trying this. Keep in mind that you're trying to show the most detail and form using only these two values, the dark and the light. Place broad brush strokes down and then carve into them with the eraser to slowly build up these forms. Using the lasso tool is another way you can achieve this as well. Painting rocks in this way is one of the best exercises I can think of to really start getting your head around the idea of rendering 3D forms in a 2D space. Again, if you're struggling, find some reference photos. Always look at reference, you know, I've said this in the past. We all need to use reference to fill our head up with these ideas before we can actually start using them in our artwork. Something I try to keep in mind at this stage too is trying to make any cracks and crevices um, make, well, make sure they're all placed asymmetrically when looking at the shape as a whole. In other words, I'm trying to avoid placing shadowed areas down straight down the middle of the rock.
Once we feel we've got enough to go on to show the basic structure of the rocks, now we can start adding another layer of value to show the mid-range shadow areas as well. I created another clipping mask layer um, to do this and set its blending mode to darken. In this stage, I'm still using a full opacity brush, but I'm now using a lighter value to start building up more of that 3D form within the rocks. I'm trying to show more of the shadowed areas that aren't fully dark. This stage of the process really starts to bring to life how the rocks can actually look. It's uh, important to get these stages done before we jump into colour, so we don't get too distracted from building the form of the rocks. You can jump into colour first if you want to, but it's still important to keep in mind this uh, simplification of uh, masses and values. Again, there's still a lot of trial and error here. I'm still using these broad strokes to lay down value, and then I'm still using the eraser to chip away to find these interesting shapes. Try to think of this stage like you're trying to sculpt out the sides of the rocks. The light value of our original silhouette below is a bright area and these new strokes are a midpoint area of darkness. We're still painting in shadows to show how the sharp faces of these rocks are shaped. Once we're happy with the stage, we can finally move on to introducing some colour into our rocks. With this, I've kept to my usual kind of stylized style of painting and colour. To be honest, I kind of wish the finished product looked a little bit more realistic. Um, but however, you know, this kind of palette of strong colours, as you'll see, is something I do tend to be drawn to quite a lot in all the stuff I tend to do and I think you know if you if you're drawn to doing a certain kind of style it obviously means that something inside you wants to you know explore that and kind of be in that style a lot so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight against it really one of the main reasons we've created these rocks in these steps of silhouette the darker shapes and then midpoint shapes it's because it helps the whole process of eventually adding colour like we are now. We now have set out a good dark, mid and light point of value in the rocks, and we can now start adding in colour to these zones. I use the colour range tool a lot for this, which is in select and then down to colour range. Um, so I do this to mask out the lightest area first, so we're only adding colour um, into this one section. When it comes to colour, I'm first trying to think about the base palette I want to use. I want these rocks to be on red sand and I want to have a, a cold, light blue and grey look to them. I'm trying to use a mix of brushes here, mostly sticking with my full opacity brush, but now sometimes introducing a round brush with opacity settings turned on so I can soften the hard strokes a little bit. If you're struggling to think of where to start with colour, or if, you've had, if, you know, if you're having a hard time choosing what colours to use for example, your first port of call should always be to find some reference like I said earlier and that can definitely help guide you. This can be real world examples or you know, pieces um, by other artists. Um, the most important thing is to research the art direction that you want to go in. With this, like I said earlier, I want things to look a little bit stylized, so I'm keeping my colours relatively vibrant and a bit cartoony. I'm not trying to be totally realistic here. 
If I was, I would be referencing a lot of real world examples to really find the right color palette. Again, I'm trying to stick to using big broad strokes even at this stage. We want to try and retain the value of the underlying sketch as much as possible, so it's important that we keep our colours then relatively bright and light so we don't seep into the shadow areas that we've already set out. When it comes to the shadowed, darkest areas, we want to be thinking about what ambient light there might be in the scene where these rocks exist. What I mean by this is what kind of place will these rocks be in? Will they be like these rocks I'm painting now, like in a very brightly lit scene? Knowing the context of where these rocks will be placed will help us decide what colours then to use, especially when it comes to shadows. With these rocks, I'm picturing them being placed in a bright scene with a blue sky overhead. With this, it tells us what kind of ambient light will then fill the shadowy areas. Shadows on a bright, sunny day tend to lean towards purple and blue colours as the colour of the blue sky overhead lights up where there is an absence of direct sunlight. So with these I'm trying to include a blue tint into my shadowed areas to really signify that the rocks um, in these yeah, dark areas are reflecting the sky above. When it comes to the mid-value colours at the bottom of the rocks I'm trying to bring in some bounce light from the red sand into the shadows. When you've got a bright colour like this, depending on how strong the light source is, it's good to show how that light is being reflected elsewhere in the scene. As the shadowy areas are out of direct sunlight, this red bounce light can fill up these areas and help sell the lighting in the scene. One of the things that I kind of regret about this sketch in particular is that I didn't try to retain the underlying sketch um, well, much more than I really should have done. As we're adding colour, we should be trying to retain as much of the underlying sketch layout as we can. Um, as I've, as I just said, added colour into this, I've got a little bit sloppy and it ultimately damages the end product a little bit, I think. The colour stage is where you can start adding more smaller details in here and there as well. Smaller changes of value to give some depth and texture to the rocks. While doing this, try to remember your core shapes that you were going for in the beginning and try to enhance them through these smaller details. The final little touches I'm adding are just adding a few edge highlights to the rocks to give it a little bit more detail and form. I'm also adding little patches of green to add an idea of moss while also introducing another colour into the palette as well. And yeah, I'm sorry this has been a little bit um, quicker than my other videos, but I kind of want to try a new, a new way of getting these out, um, really, because I've been finding that I've just been spending a long time on these and um, I kind of want to be a little bit more kind of just energetic and a bit more kind of just throw it out there you know kind of kind of thing um, and also just a bit more laid back with it all really as well um, hopefully you found this useful um, try this for yourself please do and try to stick to these steps that I've laid out here as with everything in art you know this is just the way I tend to do this sometimes um, you know give it a go and see if you like this this process and this approach to this and uh yeah see how it goes but um yeah again i will uh, i'll hopefully see you soon and i'll see you in the next video goodbye <laughs>